This is Jared Davis. And this is Galen Parker. And this is Living in Richmond, Virginia. This is our channel dedicated to helping you find out where you want to be in Richmond. Uh, if you can, if you can go ahead and like and subscribe down below so you can check out all of our videos and different segments that we're doing. That would be fantastic. Galen, what are we doing today? Today, we are gonna do a quick neighborhood watch. We're gonna take a look around at some of the hot spots that people want to know about when they're moving to Richmond. Particularly, we're gonna be down in the Museum District of Richmond, Virginia. Also known as the Fan. Uh, we will take you around some of the nice spots as far as where people like to live, uh, where people like to eat, where people like to grab a drink. So we hope that you like this video. If you wanna see any other neighborhoods, we're gonna be releasing them as they come along with some other nice segments. But again, if you're looking to move to Richmond, Virginia, this channel's for you and this video's for you. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, so we're standing outside one of Richmond's coffee roasters, Roastology. One thing that's great about the fan in the museum district is local coffee shops. Depending on where you're wanting to live in Richmond, this could be big to you. You may want to have a place that you can walk to in the morning to be able to sit. You may just want to have a nice short drive to be able to sit in a nice coffee shop. Roastology is one of the big ones. Their beans are kind of served all over the city. Uh, you also have Lamplighter that's right down on Addison, a couple blocks, there's a few of those. You may see some of those in the segments we'll do. Galen, anything you wanna say about this? I just think it's kind of funny. I'm like, for many years, just walking up and down this carry time block, this wasn't actually here. So you can see the development of Richmond in yeah. the past 10 to 15 years. So this is awesome to see. So feel free to check it out. Yeah, so Roastology, Lamplighter, you got some others like Blanchard's and Blackhand throughout the city, um, some other one-offs. But yeah, Roastology is where we're at now. We're grabbing some coffee. Maybe you're seeing some B-roll of that right this second. Uh, definitely should check it out if you end up living down here. So we're starting here on Monument Avenue. This is probably the most famous road in the fan, wouldn't you say? I would definitely think so. It's very historic. Yep, as you can see the monument behind us, it's Arthur Ashe Boulevard. So there's the statue of Arthur Ashe there. Uh, Galen, what's the deal with Monument Avenue? I think one of the things when you think about Monument Avenue is that it's got a historic past, maybe a little bit checkered in its inception, but really think about this. Um, it started off as kind of like a place where the wealthy lived in the kind of the 1800s. And then it, we saw a nice progression as far as architecture. And we're gonna show you some of the bigger houses, some of the mansions. In the 40s, 50s, 60s, there was a slight change due to the economy. So some of those big houses, they got torn down. Some of those got converted, uh, converted to borders. So we have lots of different duplexes and things we'll see like that. So if you're living in Richmond, especially if you're a VCU student, and we're gonna talk a little bit about VCU later, you're gonna get to see a lot of that today. Yeah, so here's what's cool is not only do you have all of these stately mansions, we've got this nice Mediterranean one next to us, you've got these nice brownstones that we'll see and we'll take some b-roll and some film of, um, but like Galen said, a lot of these buildings have been converted into big multi-family units as well. Uh, so you also have not only a lot of multi-unit apartment buildings, great for young professionals, great for college students, uh, but you also have a lot of condo buildings as well. So as you go down Monument, you not only have some of the most expensive real estate in the city, uh, multi-million dollar mansions, but then on the, the other side of things, if you say, hey, well, my budget's 200,000, I just wanna get into a, a studio apartment or studio condo, right? Or a one or two bedroom condo, you can do that too and live right off of Monument. As you can see, we're standing in this green space as well. This green space goes down most of Monument Avenue. So 
Uh, if you live here, it's great for walking the dog, for exercising. If you come down on the weekend, you'll see people out in the middle of this green space doing their yoga, tanning. That's what I'm that. doing out here, my yoga. That's right. No. It is about 30 degrees, so I don't think anybody's tanning right this second. But hey, we got to do these videos all year long. So uh, that's Monument <laughs> Avenue. We'll, One of like the most said, picturesque places in Richmond you're going to see. So when spring comes, this is basically the place that you're going to want to be. Um, you're going to see a lot of, we've got the 10K, you've got marathons, oh, yeah. you've got different festivals that are going on a lot of it's going to happen right here so you don't want to miss out yeah so when you get to richmond when you drive around make sure you drive down monument avenue specifically check out some of the homes you will not be disappointed yeah see now you're into the good feel stuff. that feel that cobblestone that's right. That's another picturesque right. textbook of the area in which you are in. That's right. Is the video shaking right now? Yeah. Now we're into the cobblestone. That's one of, the, yeah, one of the ways you know Avenue. that you're on Monument Avenue. And it's cool. If you if you Google old pictures of Monument Avenue, you can see black and white photos of these original the mansions same. as they went up. You can see, what, like horse and buggy pretty much yep. driving down these cobblestones. Still rolling down the cobblestones. It's amazing. They're probably complaining just like Richmonders do now like oh the cobblestone that's another thing that's so cool about richmond right is i mean we were the start i mean jamestown was the start right yeah but virginia <laughs> was really like the start of our country so the history here is just incredible to think about what you get even as far as age and architecture you start going way out west you know you don't you don't really you're get not going to see a lot of that stuff we're, we're going to see a, a nice blend of just settlers coming in native americans all of these things happened right here hundreds of years ago So Monument Avenue is going to be some of the priciest real estate per square foot. Um, you can go up into the 300s, 400s per square foot uh, to get onto Monument Avenue. But what's cool about it is again, you've got the nice wide streets that we talked about, the cobblestone, the green space and green area. None of these, I shouldn't say none, but most of these houses are not attached. So you'll see as you get off of Monument, you start looking at maybe Grace or Main or Hanover Park, some of these other adjacent streets. Uh, most of the time they're attached row homes. Uh, this most of the time you are fully detached. Uh, you have options for uh, double lots, which is super rare in Richmond to actually have some green yard space on the side. And because of that, some of your houses end up having really nice garages in the back because you have alleyways. Uh, sometimes you can get not only a two car garage, but we've even sold some houses with four car garages, which is almost unheard, unheard of. of in the city so that's really what makes this area so special uh, and it's not just monument i know we put a lot of emphasis on that uh, but when you come here and you're driving the fan make sure to drive down main street drive down grace drive down grove drive down carry because again you're going to see that each street has its own character uh, obviously what we're walking now you can see most of these houses are very very large um, i mean you can go up to 10,000 plus square feet here as you start getting into Cary and some of these other streets, uh, maybe you know 1,400 square feet, you can find little yeah. bungalows and things like that. So really, whatever you're looking for size-wise, you can find it within about a five-block radius of here, depending on which direction you go. I find like this area is really great for investors a lot of times. Like if that's someone, if you're looking for a place to rent, this is a beautiful uh, spot to be at. Yeah, and and really broad is is what two streets this way, yep. right? Because you go, what is it, Monument? What's the next one, Main? Monument yeah. Main Broad, and Broad is the main thoroughfare. So that's Route 250. It runs all the way out to uh, like Short Pump. I mean, technically it runs all the way out to West Virginia, uh, but within Richmond, uh, the main road that runs through Richmond all the way through is 250. So you're two blocks off of that. <laughs> Hi guys, this is Galen Barker. We're, we're, we stopped for a moment just to interview someone who's most familiar with this area. Your name is? Susan Kerwin. Susan. Susan, how long have you lived in this area? Well, I've only lived in this area for a year, but I've lived in Richmond for 21 years. 21 years, okay. Yes. So what is it that you like about this area? Well, I'm from New York, so okay. this reminds me so much of New York. I can walk, which is what I'm doing right now. I can walk to the fan and shops and restaurants, and I have fantastic neighbors. So I love that. Fantastic neighbors. Listen, when you get two New Yorkers on a camera, you know we're going to go back and forth. So <laughs> what is it, other than walking, you, you said you got fantastic neighbors. What makes a fantastic neighbor in Richmond, Virginia? 
Well, someone who, who looks out for you and, and also, I don't know, I connected so easily with my neighbors and we're like best friends right away. And that's what has drawn me to this neighborhood and I don't think I'm going to leave. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. There's no better advertisement. Someone says, I love the neighborhood and I don't think I'm going to leave. Susan, thank you so much for oh, stopping with us. thank you. Even though it's not exactly warm out, it's like... <laughs> Eight degrees that yeah, we stopped you. That's all right. I like this weather. As you can <laughs> so you're see, New I'm all there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Susan, so much. We appreciate it. Thank you. So right now we're driving down the park. So we're off of Monument now. We're one street over. Uh, you can start to see how you start to get some more of these uh, more like row houses. They're a little tighter space, a little tighter yards. Uh, we don't have that middle space, but you still get your sidewalks. Uh, again, a very desirable street in Richmond. This is park that we're driving down now. And again, if, if you guys are looking to move here and you have questions about the fan or you have questions about any other neighborhood, uh, please make sure to reach out to us. We'd love to help you purchase a house here. Uh, again, we are real estate agents. We run one of the number one teams here in Richmond, Virginia. Galen, how can they get a hold of us? Well, if you would like to give me a call, that number is 804 to 749016 and we're going to put our numbers down in the bottom uh, or you can email me that's galen at centralvarealty.com yep you can email me at jared j-a-r-e-d at centralvarealty.com so if you look at this house on the left that mike's filming this was shaka smart's old house it was the coach of the vcu basketball team i actually almost sold it to a client of mine, they ended up buying something else. Would have been a cool story though. So now we are standing out front of the VMFA. That is the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts. This is one of the staples of this area again it's the museum district right so this is uh, one of the biggest art museums out there uh, it is free to the public uh, there are memberships so that you can get into special exhibits they had picassos a while back uh, they've got really cool things that come through all the time uh, but even just the the stuff that's free it's insane how much space there is here so if you're into art if you're into museums this is one you definitely need to check out Galen, I know you you know some facts on this. I am a big art lover. I was raised by an artist, so this one speaks to my soul. Mike, please don't fall. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna look a little bit closer earlier, but like 1936, this is not just your average art museum. So this is kind of like an art educational institution with a, it's public, but it also has a very nice endowment. And so we'll talk a little bit later about some of the things that you're gonna see in there, but we're talking about lectures, we're talking about concerts, we're talking about AV production. So all of these things will be hosted inside of a local gem. If you're living in this area, you're definitely gonna to wanna to check it out. As Jared mentioned, it's free to the public, but if you want to have a membership, it's 70 bucks, that's it. 70 bucks per person. Obviously it staggers down for families. One thing that I think is cool here is that literally everything is an art feature. We're on the green space outside. You can see it just kind of meanders down to the museum, but you've got all of these outside art fixtures. You've got the waterfalls coming down the steps. Once spring comes around in summer, you'll see blankets out on the lawn. People bring their dogs out here. They do jazz. I forget what day it is. Uh, there's a restaurant that's up. They do weddings here. They do jazz nights. They have happy hours on the lawn. Um, so you can come out here, have a glass of wine, enjoy the art, enjoy the area. It really is a cool place to hang out. Lots of people come here. They've got an awesome happy hour, lots of different wines, kind of like a social meet and greet. So it's definitely something you're gonna wanna check out. And a fun fact, I actually proposed to my wife right on this bench right here. So not only is it a romantic place to come, it's great to bring your spouse, your girlfriend, your boyfriend. It's a great hangout. Yes. 
1936, kind of the inception of the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts. It boasts over 40,000 unique pieces of art that spans over six thousand years. One of the cool things that you're going to learn about the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts is that it has the largest public showing of Fabergé outside of Russia. That's not something that's common. That is a very unique thing to the VMFA. If you're living in this area, as we mentioned before, this is a place that you're going to want to stop and see. So a lot of times when you're looking for a place to live, especially if you're in the city, you really want to find some place that has green space, somewhere where you can come exercise, where you can get out, where you're not cramped up. And the fan is a great place to be able to do it. We are sitting over near Bird Park right this second. Uh, it's kind of interconnected with Maymont Park. Um, very large parks. We're going to tell them a little bit about Maymont. Uh, just one of the cool things about Maymont, there's a thousand birds around you at all times. This is Bird Park. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Uh, Maymont was kind of a love story in its inception and creation. It's a very cool thing. Major James Dooley, he started it and he named it after his wife Sally May. When you think about Maymont Park, you're thinking 100 acreage. Within the city. Land. Yeah, I mean, acres. that's such a rare, awesome. Uh, some of the things they have Japanese garden, mansion, children's garden activity space. They also have a awesome wildlife, so you can go there, look at the, kind of like a mini zoo, not a full zoo, but lots of things for kids and families just to get out and spend some time. Good. More birds. So many birds. <laughs> you also have uh, the pavilion, so they do concerts out there in the summer as well. Uh, so it's got a nice concert venue, but definitely a cool place to check out if you're looking for uh, green space. Again, place to take the kids, like Galen said, the animals. What do they have there now? They've got horses, bobcats, bears, goats, bears. Um, really, really, really cool place right within the city. All right, guys, so we've reached our last spot. We've been filming all morning, so we're about to get some lunch at TBT El Gallo. That sounds for tacos, burritos, and tortas. That's the last thing about the fan and museum district that is very, very popular, and that is the amount of restaurants and bars within walking distance. So uh, we're on Cary right now. When you go down Cary Street, when you go down Main Street, there ends up being just so many options for food. So again, we're gonna grab some lunch right now. We also film another video series called Food Fight, where we review different types of food. We're actually gonna be doing an episode here at TBT El Gallo. So if you wanna watch that as well, uh, we'll put a link up or down somewhere. Make sure you click that. You can go watch that video right this second. Galen? I am starving, so let's get at it. Galen forgot to mention, like, subscribe, comment below, let us know what food you want to see us review, let us know what neighborhood you want to see us review next and walk through for our next neighborhood watch. We appreciate you watching. Feel free to reach out to us if we can help you in any of your buying or selling needs.